Now let's get into setting this up ourselves. So what we're going to do is we're going to close the completed version. I won't save my changes. And here I have the incomplete version. And this is what you will have received if you downloaded the linked assets. We have a scene called main here. And if we zoom out, we can see that we have only one instance of the environment, right? So we will duplicate the other ones in a moment once we've set things up, but we have our player, we have our enemy robot. Uh, let's, let's give this a more friendly name. This is going to be robot. Um, and we have one instance of our environment. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to define the walkable area for our environment, right? And so we're going to do that by selecting the environment one game object, which is the parent of the floor and the walls. And we are going to add a script from the nav mesh components folder under scripts called nav mesh surface. And we're going to drop it on environment one. Now, importantly, nav mesh components is not something that you're going to find by default in the editor. Instead, you're going to find it at this page on GitHub. So github.com slash unity technologies, nav mesh components. Uh, I think this just by itself will get you there. Yeah, nav mesh components will get you to the GitHub page. And in order to download it, you can just go ahead and click clone or download and download a zip. Or of course, you can uh, clone it in your Git client of choice. So I'll talk a little bit more about what's in here in a moment. There are some examples, documentation, and some other cool stuff. What I've done for this is I have just pulled out the nav mesh components single folder and put it into the assets that I have provided for you to download. So you don't need to go to that GitHub page, um, but if you get curious about this, I do recommend that you check out their project because it's got a bunch of uh, examples and other cool stuff. Okay, so in case there's any confusion, that is where this nav mesh surface came from. Now, importantly, if you highlight this, you can see this is just a C-sharp script and we can actually just very quickly double click it to open it for editing. It's got a custom icon, so it doesn't look like a regular C sharp script, but it actually is. And if you are interested in learning about how the new API works, you can have a dig through these components. And for example, the method that we're going to be using is this build nav mesh method. And you can look at how that is implemented, right? So importantly, these are C sharp scripts that are written against the new nav mesh API, right? So if you have a unique way that you want to implement your own nav mesh, you can go ahead and write it against the low level API. But for many people, you're going to be fine just using these pre written components uh, that are provided for you currently on GitHub. Okay, so with that out of the way, we've added our surface component to our environment one game object. And really, it could just be as simple as just hitting bake and generating a nav mesh for this object, but I want to take you through some of the settings. First, we have the setting for the agent type. This is currently the default humanoid type. What we can do if we want to customize this is open the agent settings. I'm going to go ahead and change this to robot. Now, importantly, we can have multiple agent types. This is something that was previously unsupported. So this gives you some very cool flexibility in terms of having different size agents. So what I'm going to do is add another agent type. Let's call this instead of new agent, let's call it giant robot. We're not actually going to have a giant robot in this, but I'll just provide it for demonstration purposes. And with giant robot added to the agent types list, if we go back to environment one in the inspector, we can now select it as a type from the agent type menu. And what I'm going to do, going back to navigation to the agents tab, right? And that's where you find this. And you can open navigation under window navigation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the radius, instead of half a unit, I'm going to make it five units and the height is going to be 20 units. So it's going to be really big. Um, again, it's not going to be represented in the scene, but just imagine there's a really big, really tall uh, agent type. Now, if we go ahead and select that giant robot agent type for the nav mesh surface, and then we, we have an error here because this is like going to make slopes unwalkable. It's fine for now. Uh, and then we hit bake, what we'll see is that we get a new 
nav mesh, right? If I just fly in here, I'm just uh, right clicking and using the WASD click keys to fly around the scene. What we can see, right, is for example, this door here is now not walkable, right? Our agent is too big to get through this door and is basically too big to get in this hallway. If you could somehow get in here, it would be able to stand in there, but it can't get through this doorway. Now, we can have multiple agent types assigned to an object, right? So I've created one surface for the giant robot type, but I could also just add a second nav mesh surface for the regular robot type, hit bake, and now we have two nav meshes which can be used by the two different agent types. And we can see that our robot has the ability to get through this door, right? We can see that this mesh is contiguous, passing through the door, it can walk up the hallway, and so on, right? Because its size is much smaller than the giant robot. Now, we're not actually gonna use this, so I'm gonna take off this surface and I'm going to get rid of this giant robot agent type. But just for kind of demo purposes, so you can understand uh, that that is a possibility. Okay, so we've got our mesh for our robot. Now, there's another interesting choice here in terms of which objects do we want to collect into our nav mesh. And so currently we're using all. This will use all objects in the scene that has some kind of render mesh on it, right? We are going to actually not use this mode. We're going to use the children mode. And what this will do is only bake nav mesh on the children of this object. Now let's just demonstrate how this works. I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to all for a second and let's add in a random cube and let's make it 10 by 10 by 10 or maybe 50 by 50 by 50 so we can see it and I'm going to put it up in the air a little bit here. Okay, so now we can see our cube and our level. If we go back to our level and we go ahead and hit bake with all still selected for collect objects, it's gonna add a nav mesh on top of that cube as well, right? Because it's looking for anything with a render mesh in the scene that matches its idea of where the floor is. And we'll talk about how that works and in terms of rotating meshes in a second. But so it says, oh, yep, there's another object here. Let's put a walkable area on top of it. So there are situations where that's gonna be okay, but for our case here, that's not gonna work. Now, another option is to use a volume. This is kind of interesting. So. Currently, our volume is very small, right? It's centered on the level. Let's go ahead and make it quite big. Let's make it 200 by 200 by 200. And we can see that bounding box appearing, right? So now we have this bounding box around our level. And now if we hit bake, it's going to include everything except this part of the cube, which we can, let's maybe make it more obvious. Let's take the cube and move it a little further, a little further out. and rebake. So we can see here that only the part of the cube that's inside the volume is marked as traversable, right? Is included in the nav mesh. So that's kind of interesting too, and is an interesting option. Now, in our case, we are just gonna go with children, right? Because we are gonna have multiple instances of this environment, and we wanna keep the various navigation meshes separate. So we're going to bake using only the children, and we can see now that the cube is totally excluded from the nav mesh. So let's get rid of that, delete it. And we can also choose which layers we wanna use. Uh, this would be the layers that we defined here. Uh, and we can choose what type of geometry we wanna use, whether we wanna use the render meshes, or maybe we wanna use the physics colliders, right? Things like box collider, mesh collider. Under the advanced options, we have a default area that could be assigned. We could have multiple areas like walkable or maybe slow mud where there would be a higher cost of movement. Uh, and we can also have some granular control over how the nav mesh is generated. So this is how we're going to generate our, effectively our map of our level where our unit can walk. In the next segment, we're going to look at creating a second instance of this and connecting the two nav meshes together and also look at what it looks like to have a nav mesh with a different rotation.